So um, I'd like to start our symposium with a talk um, by Tanya Bipp and me on personality and intelligence and how they interact in the prediction of school performance. So when you um, consider predictors of school performance, it, there's a high agreement that general intelligence is the best predictor of academic performance. And the correlations between intelligence and school performance are moderated by several factors, such as years of education, and they generally range between 0.3 and 0.5. Um, but however, intelligence accounts for a maximum of 25% of the variance in um, school performance, so that it is worthwhile to look for a further predictors of school performance. And within the last 20 years, there has been a renewed uh, interest in personality as a predictor of performance, and um, a recent meta-analysis by Foropat showed that the correlations between personality and school performance are lower than those found for um, intelligence in school performance, but are still substantial. And among the big five, conscientiousness is, um, uh, is the highest correlated with school performance, followed by openness to experience and agreeableness. So um, these in, uh, these found, uh, findings are even more interesting as um, they are not altered when controlling for, for intelligence. Thus, uh, both personality and intelligence play an important role in predicting school performance and that they should occupy central roles in models seeking to explain uh, academic performance. Indeed, um, several models have already included personality and intelligence in predicting school performance and um, uh, about all suggest independent linear association of both personality and intelligence um, in the prediction of academic achievement. And um, several studies support these models and show that both personality and intelligence independently explain school performance. However, older theories on uh, performance um, more in the occupational psychology rooted, uh, they show that um, they, they, they thought that performance is not kind of explained um, by linear relationships, so, but they um, suggested that performance is an interactive function of ability and motivation. To put it in other words, uh, you have to work hard and you have to be smart to uh, reach performance. And as personality and motivation are related, other th authors suggested that performance is not only an interactive function of ability and motivation, but also of ability and personality. Thus, following the older performance theories, um, it should be highly likely to find interactions between personality and intelligence for personality traits that are highly related to achievement motivation. And indeed, most uh, studies investigating interactions between personality and ability concentrate on um, conscientiousness or its facet achievement striving due to their high relationship with achievement motivation. And mixed results were found for conscientiousness, but with regard to its facet achievement striving, uh, most studies were in favor of a significant interaction between uh, achievement striving and intelligence, at least when predicting academic achievement. Um, however, other facets of conscientiousness, such as competency, dutifulness, and self-discipline, are also related to achievement motivation and might therefore also interact with ability in the prediction of school performance, but this has not been investigated yet. With regard to the other broad personality traits of the Big Five, um, ma um, the meta-analysis by Judge and Illis showed that they are also related to achievement motivation and that they might also be candidate variables for modifying the association between intelligence and academic achievement. However, um, there's only one theory considering another um, personality trait than conscientiousness, and that's neuroticism. And um, there are only a few studies investigating an interaction between ability and uh, neuroticism which are in favor of this hypothesis, but um, have to be um, um, replicated and have relatively uh, rarely been investigated. So with regard to the uh, facets of the other four global personality traits, there is uh, not a clarified um, yeah, the, the relationship of the facets of these four global personality tra traits have uh, not sufficiently been clarified yet. And thus, studies are needed that investigate the joint effect of personality traits beside conscientiousness and intelligence that consider a possible interaction between them and that consider um, facets as well as global personality trait. This leads us to the aims of the two studies we conducted. Um, the first research question we'd like to address 
was that uh, to investigate the question whether the big five uh, interact with intelligence in predicting academic achievement due to their relationship with achievement motivation. And the second um, uh, research question we applied was that uh, we wanted to investigate whether broad personality domains such as the big five or personality facets such as achievement strivings are better variables to investigate interactions between personality and intelligence and the prediction of academic success. We kind of put this um, research question on a recent article by O'Connor and Pannon who argued that investigating personality facets might give a clearer picture of this association between personality and academic achievement. So we conducted two studies. And in the first study, we investigated 421 11th graders at uh, five different high schools in Germany. 208 were female. And um, the following variables were assessed. Uh, we um, operationalized academic achievement by means of grade point average. And the schools uh, delivered the report, cars, uh, report cards of the students three, uh, to us three months after testing. And in Germany, it is that one indicates an outstanding performance and six a complete failure. And we administered a um, common intelligence, a German intelligence test, test um, the intelligence uh, structure test, and the personality was assessed by means of the new FFI. So what did we find? Um, we found that agreeableness, neuroticism, and extraversion had no um, correlation with school performance. And the interaction between agreeableness and intelligence in predicting school performance was only marginally significant, explaining 1% uh, of additional variance in school performance. Op openness to experience was significantly associated with school performance, but did not interact with intelligence. But for conscientiousness, we found both. We found that it was um, uh, mediumly uh, correlated with school performance and it significantly interacted with uh, intelligence in predicting school performance. Um, and the interaction explained 2% um, uh, additional variance um, in school performance. So the following um, figure should illustrate this relationship. As you can see, the higher a student score on st uh, conscientiousness, the higher is the relationship between intelligence and academic achievement. However, all slopes were significant. That means that <coughs> intelligence at all levels of conscientiousness is a um, significant predictor of academic achievement, but um, the, um, the, the, the quantity, uh, quantity of the relationship between intelligence and academic achievement was qualified uh, by conscientiousness. So that was what we found in study one, and in study two we concentrated on the personality facets and here we investigated 243 students attending 11th grade at um, the same high schools in Germany that we, um, uh, um, that we investigated in the first study, but uh, this time we only investigated, uh, we, um, we conducted our study at three schools. 109 were female, and what we assessed was um, mostly the same as in the first study, Again, we had the grade point average three months after testing, and um, we assessed the intelligence structure test, and personality was this time assessed by means of the new PER, measuring um, the big five of personality and um, each of the six facets of those uh, broad personality traits. So um, what did we find with regard to neuroticism? We found no um, <coughs> correlation with uh, school performance, neither for neuroticism nor for its facets. But what we did find was uh, significant interactions with intelligence in predicting school performance um, for neuroticism on a global level. It explained 3% um, additional variance in school performance. And for the facets, angry, hostility, depression, impulsiveness, and vulner uh, vulnerability. And the uh, <coughs> next slide shows as an example the interaction we found. And as you can see, um, the higher students scored on impulsiveness, the lower was the uh, association between intelligence and academic achievement. And again, um, all slopes were significant. That means even though impulsiveness kind of qualified the relationship between intelligence and academic achievement, um, it did not uh, uh, extinguish the relationship between intelligence and academic achievement. 
So, um, so f um, much for neuroticism. And with regard to extroversion, um, we didn't find anything, nor uh, uh, we didn't find a main effect, nor an interaction. And with regard to agreeableness, the broad domain was only um, marginally correlated with school performance. But for two facets, straightforwardness and tender-mindedness, we found significant association with grade point average. Um, <clears throat> and the effect size of the interaction between agreeableness and intelligence was comparable to the one in study two, explaining 1% of additional variance in school performance. But uh, again, it was not significant. And, um, but we found that altruism and compliance significantly interacted with intelligence in predicting school performance. Again, the following picture kind of shows this interaction uh, for compliance, and you see the higher student uh, scored on compliance, the higher was the relationship between intelligence and academic achievement. Again, all slopes were significant, which means that, again, the uh, relationship was qualified by, co uh, by compliance, but um, did not alter the uh, main direction of this association between intelligence and academic achievement. So with regard to openness to experience, we just found um, correlations with uh, school performance, but uh, for the global domain and for some of its facets, but we found no uh, significant interaction with intelligence in the prediction of school performance. And with regard to conscientiousness, we found that um, both the global trait and four of its facets, uh, meaning the competency, dutifulness, achievement striving, and self-discipline, um, were significantly correlated with school grades. And uh, both conscientiousness the, on the broad level and all facets beside order significantly interacted with intelligence in the prediction of school achievement. And um, the next slide shows the interaction between conscientiousness and intelligence in predicting academic achievement. And as you can see, um, results are mostly comparable to those found in study one. Um, the higher students scored on conscientiousness, the higher was the relationship between intelligence and academic achievement. Um, <coughs> so this is mostly what we found in study two. So. Um, to the discussion of our results with regards to the first re research question. We only found conscientiousness to consistently interact with intelligence in predicting school performance. But what we also found was that this, um, this has been shown by several other studies, but um, what we also found was that the interaction effect between agreeableness and intelligence seems to be consistent, but only marginally significant. In the first study, we investigated about 400 students so this was quite a large sample size, but perhaps it was not enough to um, detect the small but um, slightly substantial effect. So uh, in a further study, my, one might use even larger sample sizes than we did. And so all results of study one could be replicated on the global level in study two, despite the ones from neuroticism. Here we didn't find an interaction in the first study, but we found an interaction um, in the second study. And this might be, on, uh, the first possible explanations might be that um, in the first study, the reliability of the scale was uh, lower than in the second study, or um, by the fact that the neuroticism scale of the new PER catches more information than the neuroticism scale of the new FFI, which might have led to an interaction in study two and not to an interaction in study one. So with regard to the second research question, um, <coughs> Uh, focusing on facets or global personality traits, we um, found only significant interaction effects for those facets that belong to global <laughs> personality traits for which we also found significant or marginal uh, significant interaction effects. But um, interaction effects were only significant for some facets and not for all and um, they were slightly stronger than for the global personality traits. So this might indicate that facets give a clearer picture how personality and intelligence interact in predicting school performance. One example is that order did not, was the only facet of conscientiousness that did not interact with intelligence in uh, predicting school performance. And um, re research on learning strategies also showed that um, like, uh, behaviors that are related to order um, have no linear relationship with school performance and had no interaction with any other um, um, ability trait in predicting school performance. So it might be that facets really give a clearer picture how personality and intelligence interact. 
But however, reliability of the facet skates, especially when using the new PER, especially when you um, use the facet skates for neuroticism, are worse than um, the reliabilities found on a global scale. Thus, the chances to replicate results on a facet level is lower than on a domain level. So, and this is one point and one limitation of our study. Um, the second, uh, the, the results of the second study must be replicated to see if, yeah, like uh, facets like order really do not interact with uh, intelligence in predicting school performance. So, and um, with regard to our results, we also had some general points we found interesting. Uh, the first. Uh, point is the choice of the criterion. We use grades as a, criter uh, as a criterion, but uh, grades reflect both cognitive and non-cognitive aspects, but, but cognitive aspects are more important with regard to grades. And um, further studies might concentrate on criteria that combine more strongly than grades cognitive and non-cognitive aspects to, achievement, uh, to achieve them. It might be that you kind of break down grades into um, different indicators of academic achievement, such as completing an essay. And to complete an essay, you first have to get started with this more motivation. You have to be motivated to uh, do some literature research. And um, of course, you have to, be, have, to have some smartness to um, s uh, successfully complete an essay. But there are other things going on to complete such an assignment. So this might be uh, a, fut a future direction for this kind of research, just to use um, different criteria that um, better combine in those um, aspects. Another um, point that came to our mind was that uh, studies show that the impact of cognitive aspects on grades becomes lower and the ones of personality trait is enhanced during school time. So as we just um, conducted a cross-sectional study, it might be that in longitudinal studies, one might find even stronger interaction effects um, than in the present study. But uh, this, we couldn't do this as we didn't have longitudinal study uh, data. And the um, last point I'd like to mention is that um, interaction between personality and intelligence seem to play a role in explaining school performance so that further theoretical endeavors in explaining school performance should more strongly integrate non-linear relationships. This is kind of what uh, Mr. Ackerman said yesterday, and I strongly agree with him. And so this uh, should be done in the future. And so this is what I wanted to say, and I'd like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>